Greetings. Um, topic of this video, um, it was sort of formulating exactly the same time as the previous video I've just made. Um, hopefully we won't make any faux pas in this one. But uh, yeah, strange mixture I know. Akashic Records and uh, abortion. <laughs> Well, this is mind food, right? You have to be creative. You have to try different ingredients together and see what flavours come out of it. And some will like the taste, others won't. And they might seem like strange things to put together. So, Akashic Records. Hmm. Got a bit of a problem in showing you that. I can give you how I've seen it. Basically, it just looks like that. Not the whole book, just the outer cover. Um, add a bit of creativity to it. It's sort of basically um, like hardback, green, dark green leather to look at. And um, it's got no writing on it as such, but it's got every little thought. Everything and everything, every little minute detail. I cast my magic eye, as it were, over Akashic. And what do I see? Well, I think of Egyptian. I think of when they express about the two parts of the soul, the ka and the ba. So when I see Akashic, what I actually see, I see ka ash or ash ka. Probably a reference in Tales of Ashkaban, no doubt somewhere in there, because it it's in everything you look at, really. Um, that's becoming very apparent. But yeah, so in some ways what it's saying is it's your record. Um, this is something I, I've said many years ago about family history, that these physical avatars generation to generation you are a chapter in an ongoing story um well law of mirrors so we go to the uh, akashic records which is the spiritual the wave part every thought that's a thought wave is all everything that you see every experience it's all been recorded and there's no physical form to it that's why i can't really show it to you I can only give you a testimony to how it was shown to me. But then if you think about it, in if you see this physical reality as being like a matrix, well, pretty much like a computer, it will have files. So think carefully if you want to be saved. Um, or erased or whatever. Um, but file is an anagram of life. So the Akashic record is basically your file, your life record, as is said spirit, um, in talking about it in the spiritual sense. And then it got me thinking about the law of mirrors. What else can we apply that to? Well, how often do we hear talk about this fire and the great library of Alexandra? Alexander, rather, sorry. <laughs> Or maybe it is Alexander Ra. Um, so I just started playing with the sound and Alex under all energy EX energy crossed under. Well, then I thought, well, the great library, when it's not under, And not all asunder must be the Akashic record, your own record. That it's just uh, accessing it. You need the right library card for, for that one. It's spiritual. It's not in the physical. You see. So, the second part. It's like I'm sure some of you probably have thought from the title. How is he going to bring these two bits together? Well, I can only share you. <laughs> what I see in things and uh, how we can apply the law of mirrors. Well, with abortion, um, 
regardless of what you think of it, whether it's right, wrong, I'm not judging one way or the other, but it's my life, it's my body. Surely if it applies to that, should it not also apply to anything else in this reality? Because this is what it's all about. It's applying the law of mirrors to what is presented by the external and how you wish to see it. It's like where I'm pretty much on my own in... I haven't jumped that hour with the time change. This is why I've turned daylight saving to something that personally does benefit me because I've got that hour's extra light. Okay, nothing externally has changed whatsoever. Depends how you see time. If you want to see it in the linear sense, then my five o'clock is your four o'clock and it is the same time. But because I have stayed with a time that suits me, that is tailored more to my needs, in this reality, it works for me. Because it's just rebalancing things effectively. It's fine-tuning. Something else, uh, just it, it almost went, but it's now come back. And um, it's all to do with sound, and it's all to do with interpretation. And it's, I think, a very good example. Um, in, mus in sort of musicology terms, um, with classical music, you, you may hear commentary on things like, oh, the artist was wonderful, the way they put that feeling and their, their interpretation, the phrasing and the bowing and, and so on. And from testimony, the, the ready example, and it came to me, things stick in your mind. Well, there's your mud flood in the spiritual sense when things stick in your mind. It's like walking through very wet sand and you're squelching and it's difficult to walk because things are being set. But it's a wonderful, something I can draw on as well. Um, these markers, um, you could say, because um, the, red, the example that readily comes to mind is the final movement of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. Now, if you compare Eric Kleiber with the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra, with, say, Herbert von Karajan and the Berlin Philharmonic, the tempo, although it's the same piece of music, the interpretation of that, that conductor's uh, how he times Allegro con Brio will make it the difference between whether it sounds like a gallop to the final post in a horse race and it's exciting um, or whether you want a more flowing, calm version of it. But it's the same thing. It's open to interpretation. And it's no different really with, uh, this of course is based on the assumption you can get people to listen, but a lot of it is the phrasing, the phraseology of it. The difference between saying to someone, you're an idiot, you should not be doing that. Well, do you know they should not be doing that? What information are they privy to you that you're not? But it works both ways, of course. So the phraseology would be rather to say, well, personally, I wouldn't do that. And if they want to know why, then you can explain why. And you leave it open to their interpretation, what, whether they want to accept what you're saying or whether they don't. But uh, we all have our own views on things. It's just most people don't actually listen they're more thinking about the next bit they want to say or respond and get their 
point of view across. But it, it is all in the art of listening as much as anything else as it is in the way we convey and the way we express things. Um, and it's interesting now, for example, um, I was thinking about doing a, introducing a character I was going to call Place Ego, um, who would rant um, and say, I found this information and there's 40 hours of videos to listen to here. And then saying to you, time is all an illusion. And then <laughs> in the next breath saying to you, I'm going to time you <laughs> in 40 hours and one minute. I expect and demand a response and confirmation that you have watched those videos because it matters to my ego. It matters that I have these viewing figures <laughs> because we, it can be, there's all these traps. This is the thing. Um, you've got the system programming going on and um, it's not intentional. It's not part of an evil system it's the system programming has created people and like i show, showed on the last video i can still be victim of it the the spiritual path does have potholes on it but it's no different from learning to walk you stumble you graze your knee you pick yourself up and you just keep persevering and that's basically what this spiritual path is and uh it's worth learning to walk for the wonders that you can witness and experience and observe. That's really what it's all about, I think. Um, this has become like a fireside. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a candle going because it's so much nicer. Um, light. Do the Halloween effects as well, you see. <laughs> um, funny, in this sort of the musical analogy, I nearly said to Thomas Beecham, and I thought, oh, no, mustn't say Beecham. Somebody will say, ah, Smith Glaxo Klein. <laughs> he must be part of the system he's advertising. <laughs> I am only joking. Um, because we've got to have the humour in this all the way through. There's a lot of seriousness that doesn't need to be, and there's a lot of absurdity, which I'm sure, um, to see it for what it is, and it, does become funny but uh, yeah I think that's it I'm just waffling now so um, I will upload this one and who knows what tomorrow will bring <laughs> I never know myself so uh, all the very best to you I'm not going to say I want the very best for you I'm going to phrase it as I see you healthy, I see you perfectly. You don't have an illness, you don't have a sickness, you don't have any ailments, you don't have any worries, you don't have any concerns, you don't have poverty in my reality. It's not something I wish because then it's something I'm still trying to bring. I create in my mind the way I want to see you in my reality which is the very best version of yourself. And that's all we all need to do for each other. I think that's the best way to say it. So uh, ta-ta for now. Um, this one didn't get cut off. That's where the other one, previous one ended so abruptly. But anyway, ta-ta for now. <laughs>